This is the rocker Marty Gennetti, and you're listening to IYHWrestling.com. Hey guys, Jackie Jones here from IYH Wrestling. Um, to do this interview justice that you're about to listen to, I think you really need to know the backstory. Now, it all started in 2007 on social media, which at the time was MySpace. And uh, this guy, One Warrior Nation, contacted me on the MySpace, and he said he had a great story to tell. He said that during the 90s, when the Ultimate Warrior used to uh, no-show the WWF, which which everyone knows he did, um, there were times that they would use a fake Ultimate Warrior, and he was one of these people. Either he was the person or one of these people. And so his story was on, on, on the MySpace. He told me that he wanted to come on the show and talk about this. Now, uh, one of two things went through my mind. Either he's, he's, this is true, and it's going to be like, uh, you know, a really newsworthy interview that this guy pretended to be uh, the Ultimate Warrior on house shows, not on television, but on house shows, which um, is, you know, feasible. Uh, they didn't really tape a lot. Well, they might have taped them, but they didn't air a lot of these uh, house shows back in the day. It's not like today. Uh, people didn't have cell phones. Uh, so it would have been illegal to even tape them, and you know, and you would have had to have, like, an actual camera. So, you know, it's possible they had a guy do the Warrior come out, do a, a you know, a 30-second match and win. Or, um, this guy was, you know, like, I, like, out of his mind and just made this story up, which also could be very entertaining. Um, so, you know, or he could have lied, I guess. He could have been out of his mind or just been a liar. And uh, if he was a liar and he just came on the show and made stuff up, uh, again, that could be entertaining. So I agreed. I said, all right, so we're going to have one Warrior Nation on the show. Um, as soon as we start the interview, he says he's not allowed to uh, talk about that. I bring up, you know, uh, uh, wrestling for WWF as the, uh, as the fake Ultimate Warrior. I allude to that. And uh, he right away says that there's a lawsuit, and he's not allowed to bring that up. Which he had just, you know, that's how he pitched the uh, the idea for the interview, was to tell this story. And without that, um, when we can't even talk about it on the show, there, I mean, that takes away everything that we're going to talk to uh, with the guy. Um, otherwise, you're left with uh, an independent wrestler that uh, most people don't know, let's be honest, nothing against the man. Uh, and he's going to be talking about, you know, wrestling uh, local guys in Jersey and stuff, which can be, uh, you know, a fine interview in its own right, but uh, it's not what he billed it uh, to me or what we billed it uh, to the listeners. So uh, with all that being known, uh, here is the interview, and keep that in mind when you're listening that uh, I went into the, into the interview uh, expecting to hear this big story, the controversial story about how he played the fake Ultimate Warrior in the WWF, and now Vince McMahon and the WWF would have therefore uh, swindled uh, their audience by um, telling them that they were paying for the Ultimate Warrior and were actually getting uh, a fake Ultimate Warrior um, in the matches, even though they paid for it and kept it a secret all these years. So, and then thinking all that in my mind, like I said, either this was true and we're going to get to something, or even if it was fake, we'll have an entertaining interview either with a madman or a liar. And instead, we get the fun. All right, we are back. We're joined by One Warrior Nation. Welcome in your head. Hey, what's going on, brothers and sisters? Uh, Wild Child of the Moon is resurrected. And, and it's a full moon tonight. In, uh... Oh, boy, is it a full moon. It's absolutely spectacular. Howl your hearts out, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a howl from the One Warrior Nation here? Ah, brother. <laughs> and we got a call What's here. What's going on? I just What's going to... on, Jack? Oh, I'm doing good. I think we're all doing good here. Intra's kind of worried about the uh, the full moon. I think he might be a lycanthrope. I'm not really oh, sure. Man. Oh, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. We got a caller here. Who is this? Caller? Oh, hey, how's it going? You're... Hey, One more Nation. You know who this is? This is the promoter from All Out Mayhem here. Oh, man, Christian Nickerson. What's going on, my brother? N not what's much going on, baby. What's, what's going on up in Maine, brother? Not much. Uh, 
the end of summer, but uh, we, we managed to get an 88-degree day up here today. Wow. All out mayhem, everybody. October 13th. That's right. October 13th in Jonesport. Jonesport. Yeah, Jonesport, Jonesport Maine, right? October 13th. Uh, who, am oh, I tangling the ropes? who am I tangling the ropes with, Christian? Uh, that has yet to be seen, but uh, there's lots of surprises at every, each and every All Out Mayhem show, which is uh, currently the highest budget uh, independent wrestling promotion in the state of Maine. Uh, we have superstars up here such as King Kong Bundy, uh, Acts from Demolition, Tito Santana, the Honky Tonk Man, and the list just goes on and on. And uh, one more in uh, set to debut just two and a half weeks from now, Saturday, October 13th, at Jonesport Beals High School in Jonesport, Maine. Uh, for more information, the website is www.alloutmayhem.com. Uh, that's great, man. That's great. I'm telling you, man, that's a great, yeah. great indie organization run by Christian Nickerson, Jack. <laughs> Cool. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, thanks for coming in. We'll put that uh, we'll put that link up on the website. Anyone wants to uh, check it out, so they find out how to get tickets to the event, they can uh, go right on our website and it'll link right to your site. All right, sounds good. Thanks for calling good in. Thanks a lot. Take care, brother. Let's get another call here. We got Jason on the line. Hey, what's happening? Not much. You're on air with uh, One Warrior Nation. You got a question? Uh, yeah, I got two. They kind of go hand in hand. Uh, I was curious how uh, One Warrior Nation broke into the business and uh, what territories did he might have worked for when he started? Well, Jay, we just established, I just established One Warrior Nation LLC. We just established 2007. Getting back into the business this year, going to One Warrior Nation, we, uh, we're right here in the Northeast. I'm here in the Northeast, specifically in New Jersey, working for uh, WWE in Massachusetts. I'm sorry, WWA in Massachusetts. Uh, working for All Out Mayhem in Maine. Working for uh, UEW out in Fresno, California, Ultimate Extreme Wrestling. So I'm pretty much being, you know, across the United States. So it's not, you know, territorial. The whole indie scene is actually exploding uh, and just, you know, asking and uh, um, being focused. So it's absolutely, like, phenomenal. Well, thank you for asking that. If uh, you know, I needed to uh, say where you know where it does, where it all is, is going to be. Go ahead. Anything else? Anything else, Jason? Oh no, that's it. Thanks for calling, man. Yeah, yeah we thank appreciate you. it. All right, brother. All right, Jason. Yeah, let everybody know that you're going to be at the Dream Reunion. That's uh, you can check out DreamReunion.com, WCWARules.com. That's with a Z. That's going to be October 6th in Kokomo. I guess that's next week. Ah, that's going to be a great show. Jerry the King Lawler, myself, Marty Gennetti, the Nasty Boys. They're going to be there. It's going to be good to see them. Jimmy Hart, um, Rock and Roll Express, Midnight Express, um, Baby Dog's going to be there. Um, oh, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be a great, great, great event, Jack. Yeah, hey, you got Virgil. Um, have you ever been in the ring with any of these guys? Oh, absolutely. 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 Just uh, King, Kong, uh, King Kong Bundy. King Kong Bundy and Kamala just recently. Um, Marty Gennetti. What a, he's a great friend of mine, by the way. I want to give a plug to Marty. He's, uh, he's really been working hard still, mm -hmm. and uh, he's still in great shape. It's really impressive um, uh, when he was on Raw recently, you know, uh, last year or so. Uh, absolutely. Let me tell you something. He, he'll, he'll, he'll be back at the top. Mm -hmm. Marty Gennetti will be back at the top. Yeah, so some of those guys, yeah, it's great. I could listen to on and on. All right. Well, if anybody doesn't know, do you want to uh, you want to tell, let everybody know? Like, um, I guess like uh, you say that you, you work for WWE for like a replacement for the Ultimate Warrior. Well, I'm in a chokehold over this situation. I um, didn't mention anything. It's actually <laughs> a uh, a legal issue at this point for me to say anything. So, as the One Warrior Nation names uh, got legalized in January, so. I wish I could explain more, but I just say, you know what? If anybody has any really um, questions beyond that, team is believing, and I can mm. speak louder than words. So if I got a chokehold on, on saying anything, Jack, and I, I'd love to get into it more, but I'm just uh, advised just to just to just, um, just move it along. All right. So uh, you get the WCWA rules. Um you know, Dream Reunion 2. Do you enjoy, like, uh, meeting the fans, interacting with the fans at these kind of events? Uh, Jack, you know, the, the, the people who make this business. I mean, 
the, the personalities in this business are larger than life, and uh, it's built on conflict and controversy. But it's the fans. I mean, to look in the kids' faces and the people, it, it's the fans that make it. I mean, all, all the workers and the hard training and, and the shows are the reward. But the people, they, they just, you know, and me, myself, I, I cannot leave the arena until the last autograph is done. The other people are just, they, I, it's unexplainable. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's, like, um, maybe because of uh, wrestling that's on TV now, that, like, these uh, shows with, like, uh, the legends on uh, do really well? Because people want to see, you know, something that they remember watching, not necessarily what's on TV today. Jack, absolutely. Old school, old school wrestling will make a return. Um, that's why when people say it. The wrestling from the, the 70s and, and in the 80s and the early 90s was was just, it, 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 was, it was impeccable. It, and people still want to believe that that type of, of, of entertainment can still exist. I mean, don't get me wrong. What's going on now is absolutely... It, 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 those guys and girls were working so hard, but that old school wrestling was more of a raw type story being told in that ring, and the, the characters were larger than life, and people love it. And guys, some of the guys are still in great shape, and um, I'm no young chicken no more. And uh, you know, I, I work hard every day. I'm in my 40s, but I, I you know, I, I won't let. I won't go down with the shit, and I wanted to be in there with the young guys too. Still, so the people just want to believe that old school wrestling will will revive. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think? Um, do like the, the kids like like you? Do they? Because uh, I guess some, some uh, parents might not want their um, their kids to watch, you know, maybe wrestling on TV or you know, um, maybe like the indie shows are more uh, family friendly. Absolutely, because why? Why go for? Why go for the blood and guts? The blood and guts, there's a time and place for that. And there's a type of there's mm. a type of fan that would go to that. If you're going to put on an event, you're going to bring, you know, children of all ages. No need for that. Good workers, good 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 people, it, you know, running the event, great promoters, and it, it's for a great night. You know, so there's no need for um, blood and guts at, a, uh, at a, an event like that. Right. Uh, do you find like the kids uh, go for your gimmick? Oh, it's it's, it's just unbelievable. But Jack, the response and and, and I'm mean, inundated with emails and phone calls and bookings and requests. It's just a the, the, the warrior character left a while ago, and it just just left. Mm -hmm. But the mm -hmm. people loved it, and the people. They still want it. That's your question you're asking. I feel it. I see it. I'm, I'm inundated with, 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 with. Thank you. Thank you for resurrecting the character. So it's, it's, it's an unbelievable, um, wave of, uh, a positive response that I'm sad that has occurred. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, but what did you think about the, um, the DVD, the, uh, the self destruction of the Ultimate Warrior DVD? Well, I, no, no one in this business should be. Everyone, no matter good or bad in this business, should should be. There should be. There should be respect. Mm -hmm. On levels, just by being in the business, no matter if it was good, bad, or indifferent. Um, it's a code. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's an unwritten code to be disrespectful with each other uh, in the business. Unfortunately, you can be put in a position where you're told to vent or say something about somebody. So, but it was, um, I, I'd like to mention, if anybody sees that video, there's a segment in there where um, somebody says that uh, there, was, uh, there, was, there was, the Warriors were seen in Florida, and it was a double take, it wasn't just one, it was two or one people, uh, again, I got a chokehold on my situation, to say anything, to read between the lines when it gets to that part. And it was mm -hmm. said by an icon in this business. So, but it, getting back to it, you cannot take away nothing, nothing, what um, this, this this man and this character did. Nothing. So much respect comes from it. 
Uh, do you have a question from the board? Uh, Gualgo here. He actually wants to know, what are your opinions on the Iron Sheik? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. He, I, he, 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 I, I think when I seen the Howard Stern, um, <laughs> the, the interview, I just think the man is hysterical. I'd like, I'd like to hang out with him again. I mean, he is just unbelievably ranting and raving, and he really feels what he says. Everything he says, he, he just says he wants, he wants to slap you. He wants to get in your face. He still got all the spit and vinegar. And, um, God, at least has, he's about, he's got to be 60 at this point. Yeah. I love him. I love him. No matter what's coming out of his mouth, he's just still got an enemy. He's just got to laugh. I, I mean, I try to find a little laughter and everything, but he gets me going. Do you think that he's kind of, uh, maybe a little bit in on the joke that he's not, he's not quite as, uh, maybe like, uh, crazy as, as some people think he is? Yeah, you, you read through him a little bit. Of course. Of course he's, he's definitely, He's on edge, but he's definitely he definitely has an angle mm. for what he's going for. Absolutely. So yeah. I mean, you know, he keeps his name out you, there for sure. Absolutely, you said it, and so you read into it. So I sh I didn't have to say it. So. Right. He but, was a, we had him here on the show. It was a very memorable interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, so he, I I was told a story by Marty Gennetti one time where he was just like um, Marty Marty. Marty, the police, the police. And he's like, get in here, get in, you know. And he's just, he's just so animated when when things are going wrong for him. And he was just going on where he he said they're looking for me. And he and it's, he's like, what happened? What happened? And he goes, the the, the girl, he she she know how to work. I give her short clothesline. And Marty goes, what the heck is a short clothesline? He goes, look like this, Marty. And he did that. And he was just like, oh my goodness, he gave a girl a clothesline. She didn't suck. He said she didn't know how to work. I was, like, I was like, you know, and uh -huh. he didn't, you know, so. Is, oh, is Janetti a guy like you uh, travel with sometimes, like on the indie circuit? Oh, absolutely. I'll be with Marty Janetti October, the, uh, with Christian Nickerson just called, the 13th in Jonesport. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, oh, and Marty will be, I'll be with Marty next week at the Dream Union in Kokomo. Right. And then uh, you got some other shows coming up. you got Halloween Havoc on the 27th, and that's oh, the absolutely. Catskills. Catskills, New York. Cat, up in Catskills, Halloween Havoc, and um, um, right before that, I'll be up in the Boston area, the 19th and 20th, working for uh, WWA, um, Mike Sparta. Mm -hmm. So, it's very, very busy. Back to Jersey, up in Buffalo, out, out to Fresno, California, for Ultimate Extreme Wrestling. Mm -hmm. Very busy schedule. Now, you get any good like uh, road stories traveling with uh, Gennetti? I'm loving it. Oh, my goodness. Um, this last month, Marty and Pat Tanaka, just uh, what a great, great night at uh, the Rock's father, uh, Rocky Johnson's birthday party, and mm -hmm. uh, Alpha and everybody was there. I think Putski was there, Billy Graham was there, Lou Albano was there. I'll be working with Lou here in uh, Jersey, and Marty and Pat were just they were they were the laugh and riot of the whole night, and um, uh, it was just you know it was it was a great night. Mm -hmm. It was actually a great night. It, it was just filled with, with, with just like uh, 40, 50 year old people acting like they were 20. Right. You know, hugging, kissing everybody. You know, the code of the warrior princess was there and she was like, you know, working in the room, hugging and kissing all the guys and every, everything, everything was great. Is uh, Janetti still, is he like a big river? I've heard uh, stories like, you know, back in the day he used to be a river. Um, is, he, is he still doing that kind of stuff? Marty's probably, Marty's the best. You know, and Hart was up there, but um, Ray Ray doink, but Marty, uh, had, uh, Marty's up there. Marty's up there. Marty maybe can consider the best. <laughs> yeah, you got any um, memorable ribs that maybe you, you've seen him play on someone? Well, uh, one show, everybody was, you know, all gimmicked up and, you know, doing their thing, and, you know, you leave your stuff around, and uh, I come back into the... Uh, the area, and it wasn't a locker room, we were behind a, a stage, and, you know, I, I, I think that night I was wearing, well, I, I know that night I was wearing cowboy boots, and I'm like, you know, my boots were standing straight up, you know, so, you know, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm getting dressed, and I go to put my boot, and I'm trying to put my foot in my boot, and I'm tugging my boot up, and I'm like, what's up, and I look over, right, and I mm -hmm. see Davy Boy, British Bulldog over there, he's working on his, you know, shoes, laughing, looking, and I'm looking down, and Kurt Henning was there, and I'm like, his shoes were nailed to the freaking 
floor. <laughs> and I'm like, you got to be effing kidding me. And then these, they were like $300 cowboy boots. And they had a, like, a, like you know, like a four-inch, like, like screw nail, <laughs> screw, you know, right through the, the bottom of the, around the heel. And I was like, ah, oh, you guys. <laughs> so. You got a question here in the chat. Stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff like that constantly. We got a question here in the chat room from Swax. He wants to know what your thoughts on TNA are. I, you know, I love TNA. Those guys, you know, the other night. Yeah, he meant wrestling, not just, you know, TNA. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even think of that when you said that. <laughs> I didn't even, that was a good one, Jack. You know, I went right over my head. Um, I just love the new concept of the ring, and, and you know, and I love the... Uh, intensity mm -hmm. and I hope it does well and I'm sure it will do well you know mm -hmm. Jeff and everybody down there will, will uh, you know bring in the Pac-Man Jones I thought that was a great move you know like you said the business is built on conflict and controversy and personalities larger than life you know and you still got you know got icons down there so I, I like it uh, Jim Cornette will be at the uh, Dream Union too so uh, yeah. hopefully I'll, I'd like to sit down with Jim you know Oh, definitely. That's always uh, I, worth the admission. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see what's going on down there. Yeah. You got a question from the board, Barb? Uh, yeah, the gibbering mouth wants to know, say you're out on the indies and you're cutting a promo, is this something you have to script, or do you just open your mouth and go with it? Well, it always starts out with a little script. You write something down, and you're trying to think about it. And once you just start talking, just things just start going left, right, in your head, coming out of your mouth. But you keep, you know, you keep in gimmick, and you just um, you, you you roll with whatever the event you're, you're trying to uh, plug, and whoever you're, you know, going to be working with, and you just you mm -hmm. have a great time with it. You know, and you try to just uh, give it all you got, and just do, you know, do your character. And, you know, I love it. I love cutting those. One of my um, favorite things to do. I'm just wondering, like, uh, what what would you tell like people the difference is uh, between like watching uh, wrestling on TV and going out and Seeing it live at like your local uh, indie. Oh, oh, jeez, the uh, the intensity and the hard work, the the, the, the velocity of a clothesline. Uh, seeing it up close and hearing that ring and seeing you know the guys, the girls hit that, you know, hit the ground and bounce and and and, and hearing, seeing the sweat being uh, off a chop off the chest, flat. You know, it's just it's it's so vivid. And it's just so colorful. It's, it's so much more better live. Mm -hmm. Indie show, big event, WrestleMania. Live is where it's at. Well, let everybody know again, you know, visit uh, WCWARules.com or DreamReunion.com. That's uh, October 6th in Kokomo, Indiana. That's uh, going to be the big Dream Union 2. you got a lot of people besides One Warrior Nation. you got Jerry Lawler, Nasty Boys, Janetti, Zach Allen, Virgil, Jimmy Hart, The Anvil. Mm -hmm. um, anything you want to tell, like everybody, you know why they should go and uh, go to that event? Oh, old school, o old school, baby. You want to see a, a, a great angle, not storyline angle, and seeing guys that can still work, and just be around people that really built this business to where it is at now. That that's what, what it would be all about, and getting great, great feedback from us all. You know, mm -hmm. on an instant level, not on a, not on a uh, platform where it is now it's hard to get to the, the guys and girls. It's, it's very intimate and, and up close and personal. Uh, Chris the Crusher here in the chat room wants to know: um, Have you ever talked with the Warrior himself? No, no. The only the only actual uh, contact that I ever had was some uh, lawyer papers with, <laughs> right. with this yeah, with this dream reunion show with. Um, a promo that was cut, or a picture that was made, and it was disliking, and so we had to, you know, we had to just go one warrior nation with, with mm -hmm. something different. So nothing, per nothing, nothing, um, you know, other than, you know, like I said, coming from that video, see what that icon says about that Florida mm -hmm. wrestling event. Did you guys have any other questions from the board? Uh, let's see, uh, Ryron, he actually wants to know, what did you think of the WCW's Renegade character? What are WCW's what? 
Renegade. W. Well, I, I I didn't like it. That's like that was a disrespect, and it was mm-hmm. and, and he was a good you know he was a good guy, and Jimmy 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 managed him well, but uh, you know I'm not. I'm not, I wouldn't hold anything back. Yeah, I don't think he could have, uh, especially since uh, his physicality didn't even come close. I mean, he was a good guy, but his, his, physicality, his physicality didn't come close. So I, I just thought that was a bad idea. Uh, I hate to put you on the spot here, but uh, we get a kind of a controversial, controversial question here from Rogue in the chat room. She wants to know uh, uh, what, um, what brand of uh, hair conditioner do you use? What? brand of air conditioner do I use? Yes. I got a Ring Central Hair Unit in my home. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks, man. We really appreciate you coming on, but we actually got to we got to go uh, to break here because we got to call the second guest. We're going to have Jessica Hatch on, who will also be at the uh, Dream Reunion, WWE okay. Diva Search contestant. Okay. Okay. And, um, uh, anything you want to tell everybody out there? Oh, man, I just want to just, uh, I'll just end this with, my only fear is that I am not inadequate, but just too powerful beyond measure. Peace, everybody, and I'll see you in the ring. Thanks, man. Can we keep you here for one second? Hey, everybody, this is Brian Fritz from Between the Ropes. Don't forget, check out my book, Between the Ropes, Wrestling Great Ups, Triumphs, and Failures, and also check out InYourHeadOnline.com. Don't be a satchel ass. Yes, this is Mantar, ladies and gentlemen, live and in color from Omaha, Nebraska, on the radio show, In Your Head Wrestling. Stay tuned every week, every Friday night. The show is live and in color, ladies and gentlemen. All you got to do is turn on your radio dial, and you will find the channel. So if you want to be entertained, you want to hear some superstars, you want to talk to some superstars, you want to hear some great stories, just tune in to In Your Head Wrestling Live.